welcome back to CodePoint. In this episode, we're going to check out some of the features of the Visual Studio Productivity Power Tools 2015. But first, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you like this episode and want to support CodePoint, head over to our Patreon page. All right, the Visual Studio Productivity Power Tools is a Visual Studio extension, and you can get it from the Visual Studio Gallery. Now, I put a link in the description below just in case you need it. The extension works on all versions of Visual Studio 2015. So if you don't yet have 2015, go ahead and download the community version, which is free. There are quite a few features of the extension, so I'm only going to cover a few of the ones that I thought were most useful to me. So be sure to check out the entire list of features on the extension's details page. Well, let's get started. First up is column guidelines. I have a code file open, and if you look over here to the left, you can see different colored vertical lines. These lines are there to designate scope. You can see in between the if statement, there's a line between the curly braces. Outside of this is yet another line showing the scope of the for each, and so on. This is really useful when you're several levels deep in nested code and need a reference to where you are. These guidelines are automatically created for you, which is nice, but you can also create your own. Click anywhere you like to position your cursor, then right click, choose guidelines, and then add guideline. This is useful when you want to define a specific column length for your code file. This feature gives you a visual indication of that length or where that column is. This feature has been included in a few different Visual Studio extensions over the years, and I always wanted Microsoft to include it in Visual Studio by default, but they never did. So it's nice to have this feature included in the productivity tools. The solution to error visualizer makes it easy to see when your code has an issue that would prevent it from building. It's really annoying when you go to build a project and it fails with errors. With the error visualizer, you can see when there's a problem right in the solution tree. I'll go ahead and remove this semicolon. And as you'd expect, it'll give us a red squiggle in the editor. But notice now that we have red squiggles in the Solution Explorer too. Now we can see when we have an issue before wasting time building the project or the solution. Notice there's a red squiggle on the project as well as the solution. The errors will bubble up from the file to the solution level. Now we can start to drill down and you'll see red squiggles all the way until you find the offending file. It really does take out the guesswork. If you just want a quick overview, you can hover over one of the red squiggles and it'll give you a list of the errors. And just like you can in the error window on a build, you can double click on them and it'll take you right to the file and the line where the error has occurred. Filtering the Solution Explorer makes it easy to see only the files that you're interested in. Up here, you have a dropdown with a few options for filtering. This exists in normal Visual Studio already, but now you can also filter by files that have errors. If you didn't know already, you can also filter down by only the files that you have open, which is useful if you have a bunch of tabs and you don't want to try and navigate through them. And you can also filter by pending changes if you're using source control, which I'm not at the moment, which will allow you to see uh, which files have been modified. And then you can revert back by just unchecking whatever filter you have. Copy and paste references has to be my favorite feature of this extension. It does exactly what you think it does. When you have a project and you need to add references to match other projects in the solution, it's really annoying to have to go through the add references dialog. While this dialogue has gotten much better over the years, it's still annoying to deal with. A great example of this for me is when I'm setting up unit test projects and have to match the references of the target project. Now, all I have to do is right click the reference that I want to copy, click on copy reference, go over to the target application, right click and paste reference, and there it is. Now, if that weren't easy enough, you can also select multiple references and do the same thing. 
It doesn't get any easier than that. This is especially helpful when you have multiple versions of the assembly you're referencing, like Entity Framework, for example. Now there's no guessing. Peak is a feature that already exists and has been around since 2013. You can access it by clicking on an object like a method call, a type, or whatever, and then pressing Alt F12. What Productivity Power Tools does is makes this a bit simpler. Now you can hold Control and then move your mouse over objects. Anything that is peekable will be highlighted as a hyperlink that you can click on. It's a simple but helpful addition. Recently Closed Documents is a new menu added to the File menu. With Recently Closed Documents, you get a list of documents or tabs that you have closed in the current session. This is super useful when you have a lot of tabs open and you end up closing the wrong one. You can also reopen a closed document and return the cursor to the last position it was on using Control Shift Z. Tab Options has some cool features to control how the tabs are displayed and used. Notice that the tabs are a reddish color and not the normal black color. Watch what happens when I open a file from another project. It's a different color. And you can customize these colors as well as other options by going to the Customize Document Well options. Under Options, Productivity Power Tools, Custom Document Well. And in here, you can also change the position of the tabs, how they're ordered, and so on. In color coding, you can choose your own colors and you can even define regular expressions to define the tab colors. This would be useful if you have a single project where all the tabs would be the same color, but you want to color code file types. For example, a web project and you want CSS tabs to be blue while JavaScript tabs to be green. Just define your expressions and you're done. Match margins is a handy feature that shows you visually where the other matches are in the file when you highlight an object. Just in case you didn't know about this, you can click on a member like a local variable, a class property, or a method argument, and Visual Studio will highlight all of the occurrences of that member in the file. This is already part of Visual Studio, but the Productivity Power Tools adds the markers in the margin. So you get a visual of how many occurrences there are and where they are within the file without having to scroll through it. I use the match feature quite a bit and the addition of the markers in the margin is really nice to have. And finally, we have Align Assignments. This is a feature that's not going to be for everyone, but I do know quite a few people who do like to format their assignments so that the right side of the assignments are aligned. To do this, highlight the block of assignments and then press Control alt bracket and you're done. Notice that the line down here didn't get aligned. That's because there's a line break in between. So you can just delete the line break and repeat the process. Now keep in mind that your formatting settings might prevent this change from sticking. For example, I can reformat the document using Control KD and it will revert to how it was before. You can fix this though by changing your spacing settings in the options dialog under your text editor, C sharp or your language of choice, under formatting spacing, and then checking ignore spaces in declaration statement. Now when we reformat the document, it doesn't do anything. All right, that's it for this episode. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you like this video, go ahead and click that like button, or leave a comment and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.